Yesterday, we're starting off with Leonardo, finalist in Players' Cup 4, finalist in Players' Cup 3, top 8 at Malmo Regionals, and top 64 at Worlds. He knows what happens in these finals. He's made it through on the winner's side numerous times, and I hate to bring it up, but I think we have to just lightly touch on it. He knows to avoid the bracket reset. He's got to be avoiding that, mm -hmm. I think, if he wants to push on through this one. He's been here before. He's made it through the, the smoothest route to finals and it just doesn't keep happening for him. So he's got to be looking to go one step further in this one. The team, as you can see, something he's been perfecting for a little while. Every game we've seen him with it, he's been playing it absolutely perfectly. Grad on Venus or Charizard, Umbreon, uh, Incineroar, and of course, Reggie Alecki as well. Taking a look at our other player participating in the Global Exhibition Grand Finals, we've got Won Suk Jung coming in from Korea with a lot of accomplishments to his name as well. But most notably and most recently, he is the Korea Trainers Cup champion. So coming in with a big title under his belt, which is why he qualified for the Global Exhibition in the first place. And this may be a rematch, Adam, but I feel like Won Suk is also coming in with a lot of experience about how to play this matchup, even able to take one game off of Leonardo in their last best of three, running that team of Zacian, Incineroar, Venusaur, Regieleki, Charizard, and that Sableye that hasn't seen a whole lot of game time, but has been pretty pesky when it has. I mean, yeah, that best of three that they played in winners finals was so close as well. I mean, really being forced to the wire for both players. And I think the information that they garnered in that set may be a deciding factor in this final set. I mean, giving up so much knowledge on a player that you play mere hours later could be so dangerous. They then know what to avoid, what to watch out for. And that's a big thing in these closed team sheet tournaments. You know, it's been something we've been back and forth on open team sheet. You, you can't spring as many surprises but now they've all been sprung i think you know both trainers are going to have to be a little bit careful maybe dig deep and see if they can find anything else in their team that can really cause a problem well you know i don't think one sec is going to fall uh victim to the dynamax regialecki ever again so hopefully that's going to be something that one sec can take into this grand finals. Adam, let's go ahead and kick off the action between these two players and see how it all ends. Are we gonna get a bracket reset with one suck taking this best of three? Or is Leonardo going to take it all home and become a grand champion? Let's see how it starts. One suck here with the Charizard and the Regieleki and Leonardo with the Venusaur and the Groudon. Sun is set up and it's helping both parties here. Yeah, but it's a definite mix-up from uh, Leonardo's side. You know, he was playing around with his early Charizard in their previous set, and this is a, just a complete change-up. Don't really have to worry as much about the threat of the Dynamax Regieleki. Clearly, you know, that was uh, something that he, Leonardo, used against Wonsuck, so does want to be a little bit respectful about that, kind of showed that play to him, and doesn't want to get caught short by it himself. I love this combination of Charizard, uh, Groudon and Venusaur. Charizard's cool too, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, the ability to just run chlorophyll, throw out sleep powders could be so frustrating because the chlorophyll Venusaur does start to outspeed that Charizard and can cause so many problems. One suck, realizing the Regieleki is not the one here, though. Yeah, Regieleki is going to get switched out and we will see the Incineroar come in in its place. But One suck is also going to go ahead and Gigantamax that Charizard, recognizing he can take advantage of the sun that was so kindly set up for him by Leonardo's Groudon and maybe get something done with it. It also could be a Max Guard, but we'll have to wait and see as it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It's just a Sleep Powder right into the Regieleki slot. So Incineroar going to be taking a nap. And now it's time for Charizard to fire back. G-Max Wildfire right into the Venusaur. And that is going to take it right down to its Focus Sash. Yep, bringing it down, you know, and it's of course going to get caught between turns. Uh, but putting that Incineroar to sleep could be kind of interesting. That does leave the Groudon, though, completely open to just throw out uh, those Rock Slides. And look, ooh, that Solar Power is so close to bringing down that Charizard. Yeah, that Charizard is going to be able to hang on. And that is a good thing to be able to keep using those Gigantamax turns. But Venusaur, despite holding on to its Focus Sash, will be taken down to the G-Max Wildfire chip damage. And now it's time for Leonardo's Regieleki to make an appearance for this game one. 
And this Reggie Lucky's probably feeling pretty good about its chances, right? You know, it's only up against the Charizard, doesn't exactly need to do much damage. Anything will get through there. And of course, you know, Wonsuck doesn't have a ground type on his team. So you don't even have to worry about that cheeky little switch in where you do get caught by the ground type eating up the Reggie Alecki's attacks. You know, the Groudon's probably feeling pretty comfortable here. Once that Charizard is dealt with, which the Reggie Alecki is going to do, you know, there's still that Incineroar that is asleep as well. It just switched in and ate that sleep. Um, I was curious if Leonardo was going to go for it with the, uh, you know, the the throw of sleep powder towards the Charizard. Opted against that one. Um, but yeah, this Charizard is just being given up. Once again, uh, the player with the Gigantamax Charizard only gets one turn of value out of it. And it's looking a little bit weak because that is easily plucked down by this Regieleki. Yeah, now Groudon can just go for a very free sword stance here. Uh, and that's really unfortunate. Wonsuck was really hoping that maybe Incineroar would be able to stick around in order to get a nice fake out. And it's not going to be able to do that. G-Max Wildfire damage is going to take out a chunk from the Regieleki and the Groudon. But yeah, Wonsuck is out of Gigantamax right now. And Leonardo has still yet to get going. Yeah, he's not used his yet, and this Venusaur being forced in, I mean, who knows what Leonardo has in the back, uh, and that's going to be a bit of a, a question mark, I think, for one suck to, to try and make his way through. Um, you know, the Regieleki over on Leonardo's side, um, kind of just free to, to throw out some attacks, get some damage down right now. Uh, the Groudon probably feeling pretty good about its chances, maybe one wants to pick up that Incineroar while it's asleep and just force one suck down to his last two. Uh, but Leonardo holding on to a Gigantamax or Dynamax availability, probably feeling pretty good about that. And the one thing that Leonardo could potentially do here is just try and slow down this Venusaur, take away the benefits of that Chlorophyll and make sure that it can be caught out. That's exactly what he's gonna try and do with these Electrowebs. Not the most amount of damage, but most importantly, controlling that speed. Yeah, speed so, so important, especially when you share multiple Pokemon between these two teams. But Incineroar is just still asleep on the field. Leonardo, though, doing a great job of just weaving in as much control as he can. And Groudon actually being taken into range to be able to use the Citrus Berry to restore health. So now not only does it have that sword stance, it's also sitting healthy again. Yeah, the, it, it's doing pretty well. I mean, it, it's in a good position to just try and start tidying up this following turn. Confirmation on the last Pokemon on Leonardo's team being that Charizard. I imagine that's got to be the candidate for the Gigantamax in this one. All it needs to do is swerve the Regieleki over on uh, one suck side of the field. And that Regieleki, it, you know, can't really switch in freely if there's going to be continual uh, use of the Electroweb as well, because then it will just get outsped and dealt with. So Leonardo kind of keeping the pressure on with these Electrowebs, making sure it's the fastest thing on the field and this switch in uh, into the Charizard you know saw that the Venusaur went after the, uh, the Groudon in the last turn saying you know what I can take that attack as a Charizard I'm, I'm flying fire type I do not care about the damage you're trying to put down so uh, feeling really good there um, it is going to be the frenzy plan um, but it's just not looking like it's enough uh, that Charizard taking that really really well yeah and that's the perfect switch in for something like a frenzy plant because now not only is that Charizard going to be sitting there also not taking that G-Max Wildfire Residual, Venusaur in the face of a Charizard has to recharge after using that Frenzy Plant. Yeah, that Venusaur is doomed on this turn, to put it politely. There's, you know, maybe if you got the knockout on Groudon, that would have been worth it. Even then, though, you still would have been facing down the Charizard on that turn. So kind of a bold move, I think, from one suck, thinking maybe once I get rid of the Groudon, I can then run through the rest of the game with my Regieleki. That potentially would be the kind of long-term game plan for him there. But overall, I think, you know, that switch just... Using the same move twice into the Protect and then into the switch, a little bit telegraphed from Leonardo and... You know, a little bit uh, curious about, uh, sorry, from one suck. Leonardo just reading into that. Uh, one suck just throwing in the towel there after that fail, well, not failed, but low damage, low impact frenzy plant. Knew the Venusaur was going down that turn, knew the Incineroar was in danger, had been asleep for a long time. Threw that one in and gave the first game over to Leonardo, no questions asked. 
I think at that point too, you know, Leonardo and OneSec have already played each other. They know quite a bit about each other's teams in this closed team sheet format, that it's better to just preserve as much information as possible, not give up your entire game plan for that game number one. But, but that does mean, Adam, is that Leonardo is now one game win away from becoming our global exhibition champion. And OneSec has to make a pretty big comeback if he wants to be able to bring us into that bracket reset. Yeah, Leonardo is so tantalizingly close to taking a title. You know, he's been finalist so many times. He's really looking to get there. But the way he handled that game, the way he handled the winner's finals as well. Yeah, you know, they went two on one in the winner's finals. But this one looked real confident and real, you know, in control for Leonardo. One suck's going to have to dig deep in the bag of tricks to find something to do with Leonardo in this one. So game two could be crowning a champion, could be pushing the set a little bit further. I'm excited to see how it plays out. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it because this could very well be the conclusion of the global exhibition. We have our two players left standing and Leonardo has a one game win over Wonsuck right now as we enter into this game number two. Wonsuck is kicking things off with this Venusaur and Regieleki and Leonardo this time around with the Groudon and the Venusaur. So we do see have a Venusaur on both sides of the field, but once I did decide to leave that Charizard in the back for at least for now. Yeah, this is the gotta go fast lead from both trainers. You know, Groudon and, and Venusaur getting the chlorophyll going, getting that uh, Venusaur to just go super fast and try and put pressure down as well. But then on the other side, you've got the Regieleki, which is naturally very fast. And also, One Suck's gonna be very grateful for that sun to take advantage of that for his own chlorophyll. So they're all gonna be moving at lightning speed. There really is no slow play available. If you just look at the selection from Leonardo here, the Regieleki and the Charizard, very fast, very powerful as well. Uh, definitely looking to cause some problems. How these GMAX turns uh, really shake out though, I think is gonna be the deciding factor as Leonardo doesn't even hold on to it this time, just says, you know what? I know how to deal with this one. I know how to play through this game. You can't get put to sleep by the opposing sleep powder, so gotta be feeling confident, you know, that this uh, Venusaur is the one and the way to go. Venusaur is going to Gigantamax very early in this game number two. And especially knowing that's really not threatened and buy very much of anything. Onsuck is going to have to play a safe here. Uses Protect on that Regieleki, and now Venusaur gets a chance to go for the Max Quake. It does connect with that protected Regieleki. It's not going to do nearly as much damage as it could have, but what's super important are those special defense boosts to both the Charizard and the Venusaur, and that's going to mean that this is not going to do a whole lot of damage on, on Onsuck's side. Yeah, I mean, it's super effective damage coming back, but you're going into a, a Gigantamax compared to just the regular form. So kind of really nicely done. And like you called out, those special defense boosts when you're staring down two special attackers, got to be feeling pretty good. Look how little the Weather Ball did in response. You know, just wasn't able to even really threaten a two-hit knockout, let alone a one-hit, which is really what some of these games have been coming down to. Uh, that does mean that Leonardo feels confident, doesn't have to worry about protecting or max guarding. It's just able to start throwing out attacks with the uh, Venusaur, the Gigantamax Venusaur, in the next couple of turns. And I think if One Suck wants to stay in this game, now is the time to try and find an answer. Um, you know, that Venusaur on Leonardo's side is putting down a lot of pressure right now. And if it gets this G-Max Vine Lash down, whatever comes in is going to have a tough time as well. So really looking to apply the pressure. One Suck does respond to it nicely, does understand the threat that he is under and needs to keep up before Leonardo runs away with this game and the championship. Well, it's time to see another Gigantamax and it's Venusaur for one suck getting that Gigantamax factor. So matching the type of pressure that Leonardo is putting out with the Gigantamax of his own as we see the G-Max Vine Lash come right down. It is going to knock out that Regieleki super fast and also set up that residual damage for whatever is going to come in next. Now let's see what this G-Max can do with this Max Ooze. Right into the Charizard will help to deal with the special defense boosts that Leonardo has on both that Charizard and that Venusaur by increasing its special attack, but can it live? Ooh, just Ooh. barely. The single target heat wave wasn't quite enough. And I love the, you know, the 
extra damage that you get from making sure the Regieleki is knocked out there. But that's so low on that Venusaur. And yeah, the Max Ooze does get the special attack up to try and counteract these special defense buffs that the Venusaur on Leonardo's side has been putting down or put down in the previous turn. But it's going to be a, a whole way to go. The Sableye is going to get worn down very effectively. Um, and the Sableye... Uh, it's got a lot of work to do, to be honest. I mean, there's already Pokemon missing from one suck side of the field. I'm glad to see it, but it's got a whole shift to get through here. It's really going to have to uh, pull its weight if it wants to be the star of this game because Leonardo is in the driving seat. It does look like that Sableye went for a Quash, which is going to allow One Sucks Venusaur to go for its G-Max Vine Lash first. We'll land into Leonardo's Charizard, knocking it out. So yes, while One Sucks may have saved himself from another Heat Wave, Leonardo's Venusaur still gets a chance to attack here, going for the Max Quake. And that Venusaur does not have very much health to stand on, will be going down. That is one such gigantic max expired, and also one such down to his final two Pokemon in this game, too. Yeah, uh, the, the Quash really didn't help you there. Yes, you got the knockout on the Charizard, and, and that's great, I guess. But you still didn't really shut down the, the Venusaur because it was still able to hit you with the Max Quake in exchange. And of course, you know, picking up that knockout nice and low there. Um, you know, yes, it was good to get the knockout over onto the Charizard. It definitely helps a little bit, but I just don't think this is the right time for the Sableye. It can, it can quash. You know, it can maybe land some Will-O-Wisps, but it's just being asked too much over on this side of the field. A Sableye Charizard, uh, both of them getting caught by the G-Max Vine Lash at the end of this turn, and actually at the end of the following turn as well, so two turns of that. What can really be done against this Groudon in particular? And we know exactly what's in the back. That Charizard is not going to appreciate that hidden Regieleki from Leonardo, which is not even had to reveal yet. No, I think Leonardo is just moments away from being able to take this game. It's obviously not over until we see the final knockout, but let's see how the rest of these turns play out. Leonardo locking into these next moves, and ah, one suck has two Pokemon left in this situation. It's, it's looking bleak for one suck. I really want to see what he tries. Groudon not getting hit there, avoiding the attack. This has gone from bad to worse for any potential comeback as Sableye takes that weather ball. A good chunk of damage going down. Oh, the hurricane hits though. Ooh. That's big. That's huge. Hurricane's accuracy is not good, especially when it is in the sun, but Groudon is going to be able to fire back with a rock slide. It is going to be able to knock out that Charizard, and now it's just Sableye and a dream. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The G-Max oh, Vine Lash is coming through damage. between turns. One Suck is going to lose his Sableye, and that's going to do it. Leonardo doesn't even need to reveal his fourth Pokemon. He's finally done it. He's broken the hoodoo of the Grand Finals. No nonsense, no resets, 